The Alaska State Poetry Out Loud competition is made possible by the Alaska State Council on the Arts in partnership with the Juno Arts and Humanities Council, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the Poetry Foundation. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our beautiful Juno. My name is Nimi. <laughs> My name is Nimi. I am representing Juno Arts and Humanity Council. We have many board members here. We have Karen, we have Mandy, we have Sue, and we have Noah Tech. He was just here. <laughs> and I want to say how honored uh, to, for me to stand here and welcome all of you talented students from all over Alaska. Um, thank you and welcome. Here is Ben Brown, uh, representing Alaska State Council. I am Ben Brown, the chairman of the Alaska State Council on the Arts, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here once again this year uh, at, with such a wonderful and the largest group yet of talented young Alaskans who are going to display an amazing command of poetry tonight. Uh, the Alaska State Council on the Arts is Alaska's state arts agency, and we couldn't do what we do without partnerships, as Cheryl Levitt alluded to in her introduction uh, on the screen up there. We partner certainly with our friends at the National Endowment for the Arts, uh, without which there wouldn't be state arts agencies in all 54 states and territories of, the, of the, our nation. We also partner very closely with local arts agencies like the Juno Arts and Humanities Council, where in the interest of full disclosure, I should say I'm employed as the marketing and development staff person. Um, we have wonderful staff. Nancy, our executive director, Nancy DeCherney, uh, is amazing, and uh, she has been committed to the partnership that's allowed us to have the statewide finals for Poetry Out Loud here in the state capitol for ever since we've done so, almost a decade, and I'm very grateful for that. But Amanda Flory, also the contract person who's been working on this specific project, puts in a tremendous amount of talent and effort that makes it such a success every year. I also uh, am the chairman of the National Assembly of State Arts Agencies, which is the consortium of all state arts agencies across the country. And one of the things I like about that is I'll be in our nation's capital when the finals take place at Lisner Auditorium at George Washington University at the end of May, excuse me, of April. And I was able to be there several years ago when Mava Ordaz first won, and I do say the first time because I know an Alaskan will win the national finals again. No pressure, maybe this year, but it's an inevitability because we have such fine, talented young people in our state. So I know you're all going to do a tremendous job tonight, and without speaking any longer, because there's going to be many wonderful poems to listen to, I will turn this over to my good friend Allison Holtkamp, a very talented comedian and actress. She's going to be appearing in the Perseverance Theater production of The Arsonist, which opens on the 4th of May over at Perseverance and Douglas. Ladies and gentlemen, give a warm a round of applause to Allison Holtkamp. Thank you so much, Ben, and welcome to the Alaska State Poetry Out Loud 2018. I am Allison Holtkamp, and I'm honored to be your MC tonight, and I'm especially excited to hear all of the poetry tonight. I was so excited to meet all of the students before the show, and they are all exceptional young adults. I can't wait. Now, this is a competition, so first, I'm going to introduce our judges, and I will tell you a little bit more about the judges during round two, but the judges are Anastasia Tarman of Juno, Nicole Stellan O'Donnell of Fairbanks, Jeremy Pataki of Anchorage, Vivian Faith Prescott of Wrangell, and Bridget Lujan of Juno. The, scorekeeper, the scorekeepers are Nancy DeCherney and Sue Sloss, also of Juno. Now, like I said, this is a competition, so before we start, I'm going to talk about the rules. So here are the rules for tonight's event. Only currently enrolled high school students in grades 9 through 12 are eligible, with an exception made for 8th grade students participating in a 9th through 12th grade class. Competitors must be U.S. citizens or permanent residents to be eligible to compete at the National Poetry Out Loud competition. A student may not advance to the state finals without competing in a lower level competition. Schools or regions must hold a competition of at least two students to select their champion. If that champion is unable to attend the next level of competition, the runner-up is sent. 
Students must be judged according to the Poetry Out Loud evaluation criteria from the 2017-2018 Teacher's Guide. State and national finals consist of three rounds of competition. Competitions at lower levels may have fewer rounds, but students must recite only one poem in each round. The order in which the poems are recited is up to the student. Rankings are based solely on evaluation sheets submitted by the judges. Judges should not convene to discuss performances during the competition. Judges may not reconsider their scores after they are submitted. Scoring is cumulative. The scores from all rounds should be added together to determine the winner. In the event of a tie, the tied student with the highest overall performance score should win. If that also results in a tie, look to the highest accuracy score. Students may not use props or wear costumes during their recitations. All poems must be selected from the Poetry Out Loud print or online anthology, which is found at poetryoutloud.org. And now what I think is the most important rule of the night, and that's for the audience, and that's to have fun. And please share all of that fun on social media. Shout out to the students and Poetry Out Loud throughout the competition. Use the hashtag AlaskaPOL when posting to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so everyone can follow along. OK. Now time for round one. Morgan Blackgoat told us, education is a tricky thing. One form of teaching might really speak to one group, but then leave another group in the dust. I'm lucky to have not been left behind thus far. I have always taken the highest level classes available to me, and so far have good marks. Although education is boring, unless it is challenging, it was no surprise when education turned me toward poetry. I fell into it. For as long as I can remember, since I was 12, I've been writing poetry and reciting it, but only behind the closed doors of my bedroom. Last year was Morgan's sophomore year, and she decided to compete in Poetry Out Loud, and even made it to the district competition. Morgan writes, feeling that surge of empowerment from the words of poetry longing to be spoken has brought me running back this year. She also acts, and she is traveling with the Thunder Mountain High School DDF team to the state DDF competition in Anchorage, where the team last year won. Morgan sums up her biography by writing, words, I guess you could say, are my extracurricular interests. And words are what I plan to keep creating and spreading into the future. You never know who they may empower at the right moment. Please give a warm welcome to Morgan Blackgoat. Abyssidarian requiring further examination of Angelican Seraphim subjugation of a wild Indian reservation by Natalie Days. Angels don't come to the reservation. Bats, maybe, or owls, boxy, mottled things, coyotes, too. They all mean the same thing. Death. And death eats angels, I guess, because I haven't seen an angel fly through this valley ever. Gabriel? Never heard of him. Know a guy named Gabe, though. He came through here one powwow and stayed, typical Indian. Sure, he had wings. Jailbird that he was. Wherever he stops, kids grow like gourds from women's bellies, like I said. No Indian I've ever heard of has ever been or seen an angel. Maybe in a Christmas pageant or something? Nazarene Church holds one every December, organized by Pastor John's wife. It's no wonder Pastor John's son is the angel. Everyone knows angels are white. Quit bothering with angels, I say. They're no good for Indians. Remember what happened last time some white god came floating across the sea? Truth is, there may be angels. But if there are angels up there, sitting on clouds, or sitting on thrones across the sea, wearing velvet robes and golden rings, drinking whiskey from silver cups, we're better off if they stay rich and fat and ugly, and exactly where they are in their own distant heavens. 
You better hope you never see angels on the res. If you do, they'll be marching you off to Zion or Oklahoma or some other hell they've mapped out for us. Danny Brady from Skagway School is a very successful runner who finished third at the state cross country championships for 1A. He is also the current vice president for the student council and has been very vocal in addressing climate change. Danny told us, I am a firm believer that climate change exists and if we don't do something about it, it will most likely kill everything on planet earth, including the human race. Our own extinction will be our fault and I feel that we have a duty as individuals to do our part in our survival as a species. When the whole populace begins to see the doom that we face, I hope that we can ignore our differences and come together to combat a force that affects us all. Perhaps it will take near extinction to bring our species together and end our petty conflicts for the first time in our history. This project allows us young people to have a voice in a society that ignores what its future believes in. Through this project, we can speak our minds and not get shut down. Put your hands together for Danny Brady. Respiration by Jamal May. A lot of it lives in the trachea, you know, but not so much that you won't need more muscle. The diaphragm, a fist clenching at the bottom, inhale. So many of us are breathless, you know, like me. Kneeling to collect the pottery shards of a houseplant, my elbow has nudged into oblivion. What if I sigh? And the black earth beneath me scatters like insects running from my breath. Am I a god then? Am I insane? Because I worry about the disassembling of the earth regularly? I walk more softly now into gardens or up the steps of old houses with impatience stuffed in their window boxes when it's you standing there with a letter, or voice, or face full of solemn news, will you hold your breath before you knock? Thank you. Iris Avik Downey is from Homer, Alaska. She's a sophomore at Homer High School. She loves language, singing, and theater. Iris's affinity for poetry from a very young age is because she was moved by poetry's evocative nature. She also likes the fact that each person's experience of poetry is unique to that person. This is Iris's second year of Poetry Out Loud, and she appreciates the challenge of recitation combined with the excitement of competition. Iris plays the bass for the Homer Youth Orchestra. Every summer visit to Sitka Fine Arts Camp for the past four years has deepened Iris's interest and capability in the performing arts. Iris is an experienced swimmer and also enjoys marine science. She is currently interested in liberal arts colleges in the Pacific Northwest and will tour some of them this summer. Let's hear it for Iris Downey. Broadcast rights for this poem have not been granted for this event.
Kiara Taylor Renteria Haste is 17 years old and a junior at Unalaska City High School. She has always enjoyed poetry, but wasn't introduced to poetry out loud until her freshman year. Kiara told us, I am quite reserved and have anxiety, so I instantly hated the idea of performing in front of people. I can relate. However, I ended up finding a poem that I could relate to a lot, and so my love for poetry grew. On top of that, I placed third, and I thought that felt amazing. I write my own poetry when I can't sleep. It feels like I don't have a choice at times. In 2016, I lost a dear friend, and grief wasn't easy to overcome. That is why I chose my poem this year, because it was relatable. Other than writing and reading poetry, Kiara also participates in drama, foreign language club, life club, music club, and she is the secretary of the school's art club. She has never been a huge fan of sports, but Kiara is planning to join NYO this year as well. As for her future, she is debating on whether she'd rather study psychology or cosmetology. They are on completely different sides of the spectrum, but she finds them both fascinating. Kiara wrote, Overall, I find the arts inspiring and know that they will always be a prominent factor in my life. Help me welcome to the stage, Kiara Haste. Broadcast rights for this poem have not been granted for this event. Jane Emingen is a senior at Hogarth Kangikuk Senior Memorial School in Savunga, and she's 18 years old. She has always had an interest in poetry, but has not read or written much poetry. She told us, two of my friends are poets, and I have written some poems. I had a book of poetry when I was in middle school. My English teacher chose poetry as our topic of study for next week, and I'm very excited about it. Last year, we studied ABCdery, limericks, sonics, and haikus in English. It was my favorite out of everything we had studied. My favorite form of poetry is haiku. They are simple, yet intriguing. In school, Jane is in academic decathlon, journalism, and hobby club. She plans to be a creative writer after high school and would love to create new worlds, write poems, and write more poems. Please give a warm welcome to Jane Emingen. Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there's some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Mariah Jacobson lives in Gakona, Alaska, and is a freshman at Glen Allen High School. 
She has enjoyed poetry and music since elementary school, participating in Poetry Out Loud for the past three years. Besides singing and playing multiple instruments, Mariah enjoys competing with the Lady Panthers basketball team and binge-watching YouTube videos. She told us, I plan to attend college focusing on cybersecurity and would like to work for the FBI eventually. Give it up for Mariah Jacobson. Dulce at the Core Mast by Wilfred Owen. Bent, double, like old beggars under sacks, knock kneed, coughing like hags, we cursed through sludge, till on the haunting flares we turned our backs and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep. Many had lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshot. All went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of gas shells dropping softly behind. Gas, gas, quick, boys. In ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone's till was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light. As under a green sea, I saw him drowning. In all my dreams before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dreams, you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face like a devil's sick of sin. If you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from the froth corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud of vile, incurable sores on innocent tongues, my friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory the old lie, dulce et decor mest, pro patria mori. Thank you. One really quick announcement. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, please not taking any videos of tonight's performance. Next up, Elisa Larson is a senior at Petersburg High School. She has grown up there and indulged in a semester abroad in Spain her sophomore year. This is Elisa's third year in the Poetry Out Loud program and her second time at the state competition. She placed second in last year's competition and is very thankful she is able to return for her last year in high school. Elisa enjoys spending time outdoors and playing on school sports teams. She will be graduating this spring and going off to college in the fall. Please welcome to the mic, Elisa Larson. Mingus at the Showplace by William Matthews. I was miserable, of course, for I was 17. And so I swung into action and wrote a poem. And it was miserable, for that was how I thought poetry worked. You digested experience and shat literature. It was 1960 at the show, place long since defunct, 
on West 4th Street. And I sat at the bar casting beer money from a thin reel of ones. The kid in the city, big ears like a puppy. And I knew Mingus was a genius. I knew two other things, but they were wrong as it happened. So I made him look at the poem. There's a lot of that going around, he said. And sweet baby Jesus, he was right. He laughed amiably. He didn't look as if he thought bad poems were dangerous the way some poets do. If they were baseball executives, they'd plot to destroy sandlots everywhere so that the game could be saved from children. Of course, later that night, he fired his pianist mid-number and flurried him from the stand. We've suffered a diminuendo in personnel, he explained, and the band played on. Thank you. Honor Mealy is a sophomore at North Pole High School. This is her first year in Poetry Out Loud, and she is so glad to have taken part. She has always loved reading, poetry, and the theater. Honor told us, last year I had several amazing teachers who encouraged me in those interests. Before Poetry Out Loud and theater productions, I was very quiet and shy, but those teachers and experiences helped me come out of my shell. When she is not reading, memorizing poetry, working on set, or being with her friends, Honor dedicates her time to school so she can be accepted to her college of choice, St. Louis University. She hopes to follow college with medical school and become a doctor. Honor wrote, I have four younger siblings and wonderful parents. My very supportive father is here with me. Their support enables me to do all the things I love. Let's hear it for Honor Neely. Broadcast rights for this poem have not been granted for this event. Claire Mueller is a junior at Barrow High School in Ukiavik. Although this is her first year participating in Poetry Out Loud, she has had experience with performing arts. She told us, I started participating in drama club in seventh grade, performing in plays and skits. Theater is a big part of my life, and I plan on continuing to act after high school. Music is another influence on Claire's life. She wrote, 
I play oboe in band and the piano as a hobby. And being able to understand rhythms and how each sound fits together has helped me in subjects and activities. Every year I challenge myself and take new risks. I have taken up a sewing class, a painting class, and helped start the school newspaper. Joining Poetry Out Loud has been rewarding, and I am glad that I made the decision to participate. Put your hands together for Claire Mueller. Cartoon Physics, Part 1, by Nick Flynn. Children under, say, 10, shouldn't know that the universe is ever expanding, inexorably pushing into the vacuum, galaxies swallowed by galaxies, whole solar systems collapsing, all of it acted out in silence. At 10, we are still learning the rules of cartoon animation that if a man draws a door on a rock, only he can pass through it. Anyone else who tries will crash into the rock. Ten-year-olds should stick with burning houses, car wrecks, ships going down, earthbound, tangible disasters, arenas where they can be heroes. You can run back into a burning house. Sinking ships have lifeboats. The trucks will come with their ladders. If you jump, you will be saved. A child places her hand on the roof of a school bus and drives across the city of sand. She knows the exact spot it will skid, at which point the bridge will give, who will swim to safety, and who will be pulled under by sharks. She will learn that if a man runs off the edge of a cliff, he will not fall until he notices his mistake. Elena Padua from Reddington Junior Senior High School in Wasilla has many passions. For instance, music, the arts, and writing. She never really thought about poetry. Instead, you'd catch her writing stories and songs. After entering this competition, Elena found a new passion. Maybe it's the structure, emotion, or just not being able to understand the poetry when you read it the first time. Elena thinks it's a beautiful thing. Aside from these passions, she takes a few AP classes, does the morning announcements, and is involved with the student government. Elena has also been a part of the Student Advisory Board for three years. She says it's a great way to voice your opinion and stay involved in the community. After high school, Elena wants to be a child psychologist to work with children who struggle with intellectual disabilities, which is something she's always wanted to do. She feels that with some hard work and perseverance, anything and everything is possible. Let's hear it for Elena Padua. Expect it of me casually, the way you expect the sun to come up. Broadcast rights for this poem have not been granted for this event. Jania Toomey is a senior at West Anchorage High School. When she's not reciting poetry, Jania can be found enjoying the outdoors through skiing, running, climbing, and other activities. Jania's jobs also involve the outdoors. She works at REI and coaches Junior Nordic. 
Jania doesn't know where she's headed for college yet, but she's eager to meet new people and experience more than six hours of daylight in winter. She aspires to travel the world and wants to study abroad in Spain at some point in her college career. Jania has participated in Poetry Out Loud for all four years of high school. And last year, she had a blast representing her region at the 2017 state competition. She is excited and honored to be performing again today. Join me in welcoming Jania Toomey. Monet Refuses the Operation by Liesl Mueller. Doctor, you say there are no halos around the streetlights in Paris, and what I see is an aberration caused by old age, an affliction. I tell you, it has taken me all my life to arrive at the vision of gas lamps as angels, to soften and blur and finally banish the edges you regret I don't see, to learn that the line I called the horizon does not exist, and sky and water, so long apart, are the same state of being. Fifty-four years before I could see Rouen Cathedral is built of parallel shafts of sun. And now, you want to restore my youthful errors, fix notions of top and bottom, the illusion of three-dimensional space, wisteria separate from the bridge it covers. What can I say to convince you the Houses of Parliament dissolve night after night to become the fluid dream of the Thames? I will not return to a universe of objects that don't know each other, as if islands were not the lost children of one great continent. The world is flux, and light becomes what it touches, becomes water, lilies on water, above and below water, becomes lilac, and mauve, and yellow, and white, and cerulean lamps, small fists passing sunlight so quickly to one another that it would take long, streaming hair inside my brush to catch it. To paint the speed of light, our weighted shapes, these verticals, burn to mix with air and change our bones, skin, clothes to gases. Doctor, if only you could see how heaven pulls earth into its arms and how infinitely the heart expands to claim this world, blue vapor without end. Okay, that's the end of round one. How about another round of applause for all our participants? That was wonderful, everyone. I can't wait until round two. Now, I just want to say uh, a few words about the, the Poetry Out Loud liaisons whose students are finalists here in the Alaska State Poetry Out Loud competition. There were almost 36 Poetry Out Loud liaisons who made it possible for their schools to participate in Poetry Out Loud this year. We are so grateful for their coordination and to the dozens of teachers, librarians, administrators, and other school staff and community members who bring this program into their schools each year. In 2017, 2018, about 3,700 Alaskan high school students participated in the Alaska Poetry Out Loud with the support of their educators. How about a round of applause for all of those coordinators in the audience. Okay, now time for round two. Now, throughout round two, I am going to give a little information about our judges and some of the criteria that they use to uh, judge this competition. The first member of our judging panel for Poetry Out Loud is evaluation judge Vivian Faith Prescott. Vivian was born and raised in Wrangell, Alaska, and lives at her family's fish camp in Wrangell. Vivian is Sami American, Irish, Norwegian, and other heritages. Her children are Raven of the Takdane Tan clan, Snail House, and she's adopted into that same clan. 
She holds an MFA from the University of Alaska Anchorage, an MA in cross-cultural studies with an emphasis in indigenous knowledge systems, and a PhD in cross-cultural studies from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Vivian teaches and mentors at the community level. She is the co-founder and facilitator of the Blue Canoe Riders in Sitka and Flying Island Artists and Riders in Wrangell, Alaska. She is the author of a full-length poetry collection, The Hide of My Tongue, and four poetry chapbooks, plus a linked story collection, The Dead Go to Seattle. Along with her daughter, Vivian Mork Yeshk, she co-hosts the Facebook page Planet Alaska, in addition to writing the Planet Alaska column for the Capital City Weekly. She is a recipient of the Alaska Literary Award, Erasmuson Fellowship, and the Jason Wenger Award for Literary Excellence. Her poems and short stories have appeared in Prairie Schooner, North American Review, Tidal e Echoes, and elsewhere. And now, once again, from Thunder Mountain High School in Juneau, Morgan Blackgoat. <laughs> The Gaff by C.K. Williams. One. If that someone who is me yet, not me yet, who judges me, is always with me as he is, shouldn't he have been there when I said so long ago that thing I said? If he who rakes me with such not trivial shame for minor sins now were there then, shouldn't he have warned me? He'd even now devastate me for my unpardonable affront? I'm a child then. Yet, already I've composed this conscience beast who harries me. Is there anything else I can say with certainty about who I was except that I, that he, could already draw from infinitesimal transgressions, complex chords of remorse, and orchestrate ever undiminishing retribution from the hapless rest of myself, too? The son of some friends of my parents has died. And my parents, paying their call, take me along. And I am sent out with the dead boy's brother and some others to play. We're joking around, and some words come to my mind which, to my amazement, are said. How do you know when you can laugh when somebody dies? Your brother dies, is what's said and the others go quiet. The backyard goes quiet, everyone stares, and I want to know now why that someone in me who's me yet not me let me say it. Shouldn't he have told me the constriction cycle would from then be ever upon me? It didn't matter that I'd really only wanted to know how grief ends and when. Three. I could hear the boy's mother sobbing inside, then stopping. Sobbing, then stopping. Was the end of her grief already there? Had her someone in her told her it would end? Was her someone in her kinder to her, not tearing at her as minded still does me for guessing grief someday ends? Is that why her sobbing stopped sometimes? She didn't laugh, though, or I never heard her. How do you know when you can laugh? Why couldn't someone have been, been there in me, not just to accuse me, but to explain? The kids were playing again. I was playing. I didn't hear anything more from inside. The way now sometimes what's in me is silent too, and sometimes, though never really forgets. Our second evaluation judge this evening is Jeremy Pataki. Jeremy is the author of Overwinter, an Alaska literary series poetry collection published by the University of Alaska Press. He is a founding former member, board member, and executive director of 49 Writers, Inc., a literary nonprofit in the 49th state. 
His poetry and prose have appeared in Colorado Review, Black Warrior Review, Northern Review, The Southeast Review, Cirque, Camus, Ice Flow, Anchorage Press, and many other journals and anthologies. Jeremy earned an MFA in poetry at the University of Montana and a BA at Western Washington University. He splits his time between Anchorage and McCarthy, Alaska. And now, please help me welcome, once again, from Skagway School, Danny Brady. Undivided Attention by Taylor Malley. A grand piano, wrapped in quilted pads by movers, tied up with canvas straps, like classical music's birthday gift to the criminally insane, is gently nudged without its legs out an eighth floor window on 62nd Street. It dangles in April air from the neck of the mover's crane. Chopin shiny black lacquer squares and dirty white crisscross patterns hanging like the second to last note of a concerto. Played on the edge of the seat, the edge of tears, the edge of eight stories up going over. It's a piano being pushed out of a window and lowered down onto a flatbed truck and I'm trying to teach math in the building across the street. Who can teach when there are such lessons to be learned? All the greatest common factors are delivered by long-necked cranes and flatbed trucks or come through everything, even air. Like snow. See, snow falls for the first time every year. And every year, my students rush to the window as if snow were more interesting than math. Which, of course, it is. So please, let me teach like a Steinway, spinning slowly in April air, so almost falling, so hinderingly dangling from the neck of the mover's crane, so on the edge of losing everything. Let me teach like the first snow falling. Thank you. Hailing from Fairbanks, Nicole Stellen O'Donnell is our third evaluation judge on the panel this evening. Nicole Stellan O'Donnell's first collection, Steam Laundry, is the 2018 Alaska Reads selection. Her next book, You Are No Longer in Trouble, a memoir in flash about being a teacher, a student, and a principal's daughter, is forthcoming in March 2019 for the Marie Alexander series. Her poems have appeared in Prairie Schooner, Passages North, Bellingham Review, Beloit Poetry Journal, The Women's Review of Books, Redivider, Zisava, and other literary journals. Her essays and commentaries appeared in the Anchorage Daily News on the Alaska Public Radio Network. She received both an Individual Artist Award and an Artist Fellowship from the Rasmussen Foundation, as well as a Buchiever Fellowship and an Alaska Literary Award from the Alaska Arts and Culture Foundation. In 2014, she served as the Winter Writer in Residence at Denali National Park. She spent the spring of 2016 in South India as a recipient of a Fulbright Distinguished Award in Teaching. She teaches English at a school for incarcerated youth and lives in Fairbanks, Alaska. She has been to the Alaska Statewide Poetry Out Loud finals once before. Not as a judge, though. She was a coach, excitedly sitting in the audience, cheering on her student. And now... Please help me welcome, once again, from Homer High School, Iris Downey. A Noiseless Patient Spider by Walt Whitman. A Noiseless Patient Spider. I mocked 
where on a little promontory it stood, isolated, marked how to explore the vacant, vast surrounding. It launched forth filament, 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 out of itself, ever unreeling them, ever tirelessly speeding them. And you, O oh my soul, where you stand, surrounded, detached, in measureless oceans of space, ceaselessly musing, venturing, throwing, seeking the spheres to connect them, till the bridge you will need be formed, till the ductile anchor hold, Tell the gossamer thread you fling catch somewhere, oh, my soul. Anastasia Tarman is our fourth and final evaluation judge on this evening's panel. Anastasia is an historical collections librarian and digital newspaper project director at the Alaska State Library Archives and Museum in Juneau. She received her Master's of Library and Information Science at Syracuse University and her BA in English Literature and Creative Writing at Cal State. She loves poetry and working with high school age people. Poetry, she thinks, is the vehicle for traveling into and sharing our liminal dream spaces. And now, once again, from Unalaska City School, Kiara Haste. Invictus by William Ernest Henley. Out of the night that covers me, Black is the pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. The accuracy judge for this evening's competition is Bridget Lujan. Bridget Lujan is returning to the Poetry Out Loud judging panel as the accuracy judge. Bridget takes accuracy very seriously, and in fact, she has made a career of striving for it on a daily basis. She is a CPA in Alaska and owns her own local firm, specializing in tax and consulting work for businesses and individuals. She is also the current executive director for Juno Dance Theater. Bridget has a BFA in theater from Niagara University, New York. She is a former trustee and treasurer of the Juno Arts and Humanities Council. Bridget is the current president of the Rotary Club of Juno and has lived in Juno since 1995. She and her husband, Jess, have two children, Christopher and Megan, both students at Thunder Mountain High School. She commends and congratulates all the finalists and wishes them luck. Have fun out there, she says. Now, please help me welcome once again, from Hogarth Kingikuk Senior Memorial School in Savunga, Jane Emingen. It was not death, for I stood up, by Emily Dickinson. It was not death, for I stood up, and all the dead lie down. It was not night, for all the bells put out their tongues for noon. It was not frost, for on my flesh I felt syracose crawl, nor fire, for just my marble feet could keep a chancel cool. And yet, it tasted 
like them all, the figures I have seen, set orderly for burial, reminded me of mine. As if my life were shaven and fitted to a frame and could not breathe without a key, and twas like midnight some, when everything that ticked has stopped and space stares all around, or grisly frosts for Sodom morns repeal the beating ground. But most, like chaos, stopless, cool, without a chance or a spa, or even a report of land to justify despair. So over the course of the next few recitations, I'm going to share criteria that our judges use to evaluate the finalists' work. All Poetry Out Loud recitations are evaluated using the same criteria, from the earliest classroom level competition to the national recitation competition in Washington, DC. The first criteria is physical presence. According to the Poetry Out Loud website, this is about eye contact, body language, and poise. Qualities of a strong recitation include ease and comfort with the audience, engagement with the audience through physical presence, including appropriate body language, confidence, and eye contact without appearing artificial. And now, once again, from Glen Allen School, here is Mariah Jacobson. Quite Frankly, by Mark Halliday. They got old. They got old and died. But first, okay. But first, they composed plangent depictions of how much they lost and how much cared about losing. Meantime, their hair got thin and more thin as their so shoulders went slumpy. Okay, but not before the photo albums got arranged by them. Arranged with the niftiness, not just two or three, but 18 photo albums. Yes, 18 eventually. 18 albums proving the beauty of them, and not someone else. Them and their relations and friends, incontrovertible playing croquet in that Bloomington yard, floating on those comic inflatables at Dow Lake, giggling at the Dairy Queen, waltzing at the wedding, building a Lego palace on the porch, holding the baby beside the rental truck, leaning on the Hemingway statue at Pamplona, Discussing the eternity of art and that Sardinian restaurant. Yes. And so, quite frankly, at the end of the day, they got old and died. Okay. Sure. But quite frankly, how much does that matter in view of the 18 photo albums? Big ones. 13 inches by 12 inches each full of such undeniable beauty. Since we introduced Bridget Lujan as our accuracy judge, I'll tell you a little bit about what the accuracy judge has to consider. Accuracy is the first element of recitation. The most basic task for the student is to keep the poet's language intact for the audience. Given that accuracy is the foundation of a good recitation, serving as an accuracy judge is a critical component of the evaluation process. It is the job of the accuracy judge to mark missed or incorrect words during the recitation. If the contestant, uh, contestant relies on the prompter, points also will be subtracted from the accuracy score from each judge. Eight points will be added to each judge's contest evaluation sheet for a perfectly accurate recitation. And now, 
help me welcome back to the stage from Petersburg High School, Elisa Larson. Friendship After Love by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. After the fierce midsummer all ablaze has burned itself to ashes and expires in the intensity of its own fires, there come the mellow, mild St. Martin days crowned with the calm of peace, but sad with haze. So after love has led us till he tires of his own throes and torments and desires, comes large-eyed friendship with a restful gaze. He beckons us to follow, and across cool, verdant veils, we wander free from care. Is it a touch of frost lies in the air? Why are we haunted with a sense of loss? We do not wish the pain back or the heat. And yet, and yet, these days are incomplete. Thank you. Next up in our list of evaluation criteria is voice and articulation. This refers to volume, pace, rhythm, intonation, and proper pronunciation. Keep in mind that at some levels of competition, a microphone may be used, like the state competition. The qualities of a strong recitation as relates to voice and articulation include all words are pronounced correctly, and the volume, rhythm, and intonation greatly enhance the recitation. Pacing is appropriate to the poem. And now, once again, put your hands together from North Pole High School, Honor Neely. The Gaff by C.K. Williams. If that someone who's me, yet not me, yet who judges me, is always with me, as he is, shouldn't he have been there when I said so long ago that thing I said? If he who rakes me with such not trivial shame for minor sins now were there then, shouldn't he have warned me he'd even now devastate me for my unpardonable affront? I'm a child then, yet already I've composed this conscience beast who harries me. Is there anything else I can say with certainty about who I was, except that I, that he, could already draw from infinitesimal transgressions complex chords of remorse and orchestrate ever undiminishing retribution from the hapless rest of myself? The son of some friends of my parents has died, and my parents, paying their call, take me along, and I'm sent out with the dead boy's brother and some others to play. We're joking around, and some words come to my mind, which, to my amazement, are said. How do you know when you can laugh when somebody dies, your brother dies, is what's said, and the others go quiet, the backyard goes quiet, Everyone stares, and I want to know now why that someone in me who's me yet not me let me say it. Shouldn't he have told me the contrition cycle would from then be ever upon me? It didn't matter that I'd really only wanted to know how grief ends and when? I could hear the boy's mother sobbing inside, then stopping, sobbing, then stopping. Was the end of her grief already there? Had her someone in her told her it would end? Was her someone in her kinder to her, not tearing at her as mine did, still does, me, for guessing grief someday ends? Is that why her sobbing stopped sometimes? She didn't laugh, though, or I never heard her. How do you know when you can laugh? 
Why couldn't someone have been there in me, not just to accuse me, but to explain? The kids were playing again. I was playing. I didn't hear anything more from inside the way now sometimes what's in me is silent too. And sometimes, though never really, forgets. The third criteria upon which Poetry Out Loud recitations are evaluated is called dramatic appropriateness. The Poetry Out Loud website says, recitation is about conveying a poem's sense with its language. It is closer to the art of oral interpretation than theatrical performance. Think storyteller or narrator rather than actor. A strong performance will rely on a powerful internalization of the poem rather than distracting dramatic gestures. You represent the poem's voice, not the characters. You must subtly enhance the understanding and enjoyment of the poem without overshadowing the language. And now, once again, please help me welcome from Barrow High School in Ukiagbik, Claire Mueller. The Tide Rises, The Tide Falls by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. The tide rises, the tide falls, the twilight darkens, the curlew calls. Along the sea sands damp and brown, the traveler hastens toward the town, and the tide rises, the tide falls. Darkness settles on roofs and walls, but the sea, the sea in the darkness calls. The little waves with their soft white hands efface the footprints in the sands. And the tide rises, the tide falls. The morning breaks, the steeds in their stalls stamp and neigh as the hostler calls. The day returns, but nevermore returns the traveler to the shore, and the tide rises, the tide falls. Evidence of understanding is the fourth individual criteria the judges must consider in their evaluation of a poetry out loud recitation. This category is to evaluate the student's comprehension and mastery of the poem. The poet's words should take precedence and should be voiced in a way that helps the audience to understand the poem better. To do this, the student must effectively use intonation, emphasis, tone, and style of delivery. Tips for students include, you must understand the poem fully. Be attentive to the messages, meanings, allusion, irony, tones of voice, and other nuances in your poem. And, be sure you know the meaning of every word and line in your poem. And now, please help me welcome back to the stage from Reddington Junior Senior High School in Wasilla, Elena Padua. The Kiss by Robert Graves. Are you shaken? Are you stirred? By a whisper of love? Spellbound to a word. Does time cease to move? Till her calm gray eye expands to a sky and the clouds of her hair like storms go by? Then the lips that you have kissed turn to frost and fire and the white steaming mist obscures desire. So back to their birth, fade water, air, earth and the first power moves over void and dearth. Is that love? No, but death, a passion, a shout, the deep in breath, the breath roaring out, and once that is flown, you must lie alone, without hope, without life, poor flesh, sad bone. Thank you.
In wrapping up the information about how these recitations are considered, the state and national poetry out loud competitions require that each student select three poems from the Poetry Out Loud anthology and commit these poems to memory. While poems must be committed to memory, during Poetry Out Loud, students are permitted to utilize a prompter during recitation. This is someone will ha who will have a notebook with each poem whom the students can look to if they forget a word or line. Tonight, our prompter is Laura Forbes from the Alaska State Council on the Arts. And now, welcome once again back to the stage from West Anchorage High School, Janya Toomey. Ozymandias by Percy Bysshe Shelley. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand half sunk a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them, and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal, these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. And that's the end of round two. How about another round of applause for the awesome contestant? That was. That was wonderful. I'm so inspired. Now the next thing that's going to happen is that the judges are going to deliberate and they're going to determine the finalists for round three. So in the meantime, we are going to take a 10 minute break.
Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a nice break. It's nice to see everyone back. Now, before we move on to round three, we have a very special guest who is going to say a few words to us. I'm really excited about this. Please help me welcome to the stage the 2016-2018 Alaska State Rider Laureate, Ernestine Sekaliklukt Hayes. Thank you. It's really an honor to be here tonight, to be part of such a wonderful annual event. I'm very, very proud. I would like to acknowledge the Akkon people upon whose land we find ourselves tonight. Ishmael Hope, Emily Wall, Christine Amy Erickson, Vivian Faith Prescott, Richard Downauer, Tom Sexton, John Straley, Eva Salidas, Frank Sos, Jeremy Pataki, Diane Benson, Kirsten Christensen, Nicole Stellan O'Donnell, Kathleen Tarr, and so many more, including Mary Tallmountain, with whom my life has much in common. Like me, Mary Tallmountain was born in the territory of Alaska to a native mother and a non-native father. Her mother battled tuberculosis, as did my mother. At a young age, Tall Mountain was taken out of Alaska to live down south, as was I. The transition was traumatic for both of us. She forgot much of the language, didn't keep in touch with her family back home, and was bullied in school. We faced prejudice and hardship. We struggled with alcoholism and abuse. We began working a career in an office. In the mid-1980s, after Tall Mountain reached middle age, she lived in San Francisco's Tenderloin District. She and I probably passed each other on those streets, frequented the same food lines, got to know some of the same people. Tall Mountain started writing seriously around the age 50, and she passed away in the mid-1990s, leaving behind poetry that evokes the life of a woman taken from her Alaska homeland at an early age to live a faraway, displaced life. The Last Wolf. The Last Wolf hurried toward me through the ruined city, and I heard his baying echoes down the steep, smashed warrens of Montgomery Street and past the ruby-crowned high-rises left standing, their lighted elevators useless, passing the flicking red and green of traffic signals, baying his way eastward in the mystery of his wild, loping gait, closer the sounds in the deadly night, through clutter and rubble of quiet blocks. I heard his voice ascending the hill and at last his low whine as he came floor by empty floor to the room where I sat in my narrow bed, looking west, waiting. I heard him snuffle at the door and I watched. He trotted across the floor. He laid his long gray muzzle on the spare white spread and his eyes burned yellow. His small dotted eyebrows quivered. Yes, I said, I know what they have done. Those words were by Mary Tall Mountain, and they were for us all about the past. And these words I'm about to read, not by Mary Tall Mountain, and not about the past, but about the future, and for the future that we see tonight, of the children of the last generation, the next generation who are leading us, leading us into the future. Tap-rooted perennials are on fire today. Flames abloom. Generations no longer indehiscent. Unbandaged wounds burst above colonial skies. Scorched words nourish the hungry air. Mothers will finally smile when they witness our bodies floating, floating above the stratosphere, searching for news of our next generation. They will stop us before we seem to drift by. 
We will twine hands. They will be our children. Together, we will heal the coming generations. Gunath Chish to you. Gunath Chish. Thank you. Thank you. That was beautiful. And now it's time for round three. And in this round, I'm going to announce the finalists. And they are going to read their third poem in the order that I read their names. So the five finalists this year are from Skagway School, Danny Brady. From Glen Allen School, Mariah Jacobson. From Petersburg High School, Elisa Larson. From North Pole High School, Honor Mealy. And from West Anchorage High School, Jania Toomey. So our first finalist I'd like to invite to the stage, Danny Brady. When I Heard the Learned Astronomer by Walt Whitman. When I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures were ranged in columns before me, when I was first shown the charts and diagrams to add, divide, and measure them, when I sitting heard the astronomer, where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon unaccountable I became tired and sick, till rising and gliding out, I wandered off by myself. In the mystical, moist night air, and from time to time, looked up in perfect silence at the stars. Thank you. Our next finalist from Glen Allen School, Mariah Jacobson. The ch The Charge of the Light Brigade by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Half a league, half a league, half a league onward. All in the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the Light Brigade, charge for the guns, he said. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the light brigade. Was there a man dismayed? Not, though the soldier knew. Someone had blundered. Theirs not to make reply. Theirs not to reason why. Theirs but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon in front of them volleyed and thundered. Stormed at with shot and shell, boldly they rode, and well, into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell, rode the 600. Flashed all their sabers bare, flashed as they turned in air, sabering the gunners there. Well, all 
the world wondered. Plunged in the battery smoke, right through the line they broke, Cossack and Russian reeled from the saber stroke, shattered and sundered. Then they rode back, but not, not the 600. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon behind them volleyed and thundered, stormed at with shot and shell. While well, horse and hero fell, they that had fought so well came through the jaws of death, back from the mouth of hell, all that was left of them left of 600. When can their glory fade? Oh, the wild charge they made. All the world wondered. Honor the charge they made. Honor the Light Brigade, Noble 600. Thank you, Mariah. Good job standing up there while the judges judged. I'm not going to rush them this time. I'm going to give you a little information about the Juno Arts and Humanities Council. The council was incorporated in 1973. It is the formal arts agency for the capital city of Juno and operates the Juno Arts and Culture Center, the Jack, a vibrant community center providing a location for concerts and events, rotating gallery, and a lobby gift shop. The council offers programming in performance, visual, literary, and arts education, education, as well as grants, scholarships, and helpful resources for local artists. And I think we are ready for our next finalist. Please welcome back to the stage from Petersburg High School, Elisa Larson. <laughs> Spanglish by Tato Laviera. Pues estoy creando Spanglish. Bicultural systems, scientific, lexicographical, intertextual integrations. Two expressions existentially wired, two dominant languages, continentally abrazándose. In colloquial combate, in las aceras del soil, Imperio Spanglish emerges. Control, pandillaje sobre territorio, bilingual. Las novelas mexicanas mixing with radio rock and roll. Condimented cocina lore. Immigrant, migrant, nasal mispronouncements. Barajas chismeteos, social club. Hip hop prieto, street salsa. Corner soul and mixturando Spanish pop farandula. Standard English classroom with computer technicalities. Spanglish is literally perfect. Spanglish is ethnically snobbish. Spanglish is carajol inteligencia. Which US slang do you speak? So a little bit about the Poetry Out Loud program. Poetry Out Loud uses a pyramid structure that starts at the classroom level. level. Winners advance to a school-wide competition, then to a regional or state competition, and ultimately to the national finals. In Alaska, there are four regions with enough population to hold in-person regional competitions. The Anchorage School District, Fairbanks North Star Borough School District, the Matsu Borough School District, and Juno School District. For rural communities across the state, there is a video adjudication process whereby schools from each region send videos of their school representatives to a panel of judges in Juno. This is unique to the state of Alaska. And I believe we are ready for our next finalist. 
please welcome back to the stage from North Pole High School, Honor Neely. The American Soldier by Philip Freneau. A picture from the life, to serve with love and shed your blood, approved may be above, but here below, example shoe, tis dangerous to be good. Lord Oxford. Deep in a veil, a stranger now to arms, too poor to shine in courts, too proud to beg. He who once warred on Saratoga's plains now sits musing o'er his scars and wooden leg. Remembering still the toil of former days, to other hands he sees his earnings paid. They share the due reward, he feeds on praise. Lost in the abyss of want, misfortune's shade. Far, far from domes where splendid tapers glare, tis his from dear bought peace, no wealth to win. Removed alike from courtly cringing squires, the great man's levy, and the proud man's grin. Sold are those arms which once on Britain's blazed, when, flushed with conquest, to the charge they came, that power repelled and freedom's fabric raised. She leaves her soldier, famine, and a name. So what happens after the Alaska State Poetry Out Loud competition tonight? The Alaska State Champion will then go on to compete at the National Poetry Out Loud Finals in Washington, D.C. on April 23rd through 25th. If for any reason the regional or state champion is unable to attend the next level of competition, the runner-up will be called upon to compete. And now, our next finalist from West Anchorage High School, Jania Toomey. All This and More by Mary Carr. The Devil's Tour of Hell did not include a factory line where molten lead spilled into mouths held wide. No electric drill spiraling screws into hands and feet, nor giant pliers to lower you into simmering vats. Instead, a circle of light opened on your stuffed armchair, whose chintz orchids did not boil and change, and the devil adjusted your new spiked antennae almost delicately, with claws curled and lacquered black, before he spread his leather wings to leap into the acid green sky. So, your head became a TV hull, a gargoyle mirror. Your doppelganger sloppy at the mouth and swollen at the joints enacted your day's in sinuous slow motion, your lines delivered with a mocking sneer. Sometimes, the frame froze, reversed, began again, the red eyes of a friend you cursed, your girl child cowered behind the drapes, parents alive again, and puzzled by your new form. That's why you clawed your way back to this life. Thank you. Those were our five finalists, so please, how about another round of applause for those finalists? And I will ask even once again, how about a round of applause for all of our participants tonight? Personally, I am very inspired by all of you, and I think that you have done a wonderful job tonight, and I think that the judges 
have a hard job now that they have to do. Right now, the judges are going to go deliberate. And in the meantime, we are lucky enough to, if they want to, our remaining participants will be able to come up to the stage and read their final poem, read, recite their final poem to us. But it's up to them. So I'm going to start at the top of the list. Morgan, you want to? Morgan Blackgoat, everyone. On the Death of Von Bronte by Charlotte Bronte. There's little joy in life for me, and little terror in the grave. I've lived the parting hour to see of one I would have died to save. Calmly, to watch the failing breath, longing that each sigh might be the last, hoping to see the shade of death or those beloved features cast. The cloud, the stillness that must part the darling of my life from me. And then to thank God, to thank him well and fervently. Although I knew that we had lost the glory and hope of our life. And now, benighted, tempest tossed, must bear alone the weary strife. From Homer High School, Iris Downey. The Paradox by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. I am the mother of sorrows. I am the ender of grief. I am the bud and the blossom. I am the late falling leaf. I am thy priest and thy poet. I am thy serf and thy king. I cure the tears of the heart sick. When I come near, they shall sing. White are my hands as the snowdrop, swart are my fingers as clay. Dark is my frown as the midnight, fair is my brow as the day. Battle and war are my minions, doing mine will as divine. I am the calmer of passions, peace is a nursling of mine. Speak to me gently or curse me. Seek me or fly from my sight. I am thy fool in the morning. Thou art my slave in the night. Down to the grave will I take thee. Out from the noise of the strife. Then shalt thou see me and know me. Death then, no longer, but life. Then shalt thou sing at my coming, kiss me with passionate breath, clasp me and smile to have thought me. Art save the foeman of death. Come to me, brother, when weary. Come when thy lonely heart swells. I'll guide thy footsteps and lead thee down where the dream woman dwells. Please welcome Kiara Haste. The Gaff by C.K. Williams. If that someone who is me, yet not me, yet who judges me, is always with me as he is, shouldn't he have been there when I said so long ago that thing I said? If he who rakes me with such not trivial sins from my, 
with such not trivial shame for minor sins now were there then. Shouldn't he have warned me he'd even now devastate me for my unpardonable affront? I'm a child then, yet already have composed this conscious beast who harries me. Is there anything else I can say with certainty about who I was except that I, that he, could already draw from infinitesimal transgressions, complex cores of remorse, and orchestrate ever undiminishing retribution from the hapless rest of myself? The son of some friends of my parents has died. And my parents, paying their call, take me along. And I'm sent out with the dead boy's brother and some others to play. We're joking around, and some words come to my mind, which, to my amazement, are said. How do you know when you can laugh when somebody dies? Your brother dies, is what's said. And the others go quiet, the backyard goes quiet, Everyone stares, and I want to know now why that someone in me who's me yet not me let me say it. Shouldn't he have told me the contrition cycle would from then be ever upon me? It didn't matter that I really only want to know how grief ends and when. I could hear the boy's mother sobbing inside. Then stopping, sobbing, then stopping. Was the end of her grief already there? Had her someone in her told her it would end? Was her someone in her kinder to her, not tearing at her, as mine did, still does me, for guessing grief someday ends? Is that why her sobbing stops sometimes? She didn't laugh, though, or I never heard her. How do you know when you can laugh? Why couldn't someone have been there in me, not just to accuse me, but to explain? The kids were playing again. I was playing. I didn't hear anything more from inside. The way now sometimes what's in me is silent too. And sometimes, though, never really forgets. Everyone, please welcome Claire Mueller. <laughs> Dear Reader by Rita May Reese, you have forgotten it all. You have forgotten your name, where you lived, who you loved, why. I am simply your nurse, terse and unlovely. I point to things and remind you what they are. Chair, book, daughter, soup. And when we are alone, I tell you what lies in each direction. This way is death, and this way after a longer walk is death. And that way is death, but you won't see it until it is right in front of you. Once, after your niece had been to visit you, and I said something about how you must love her, or she must love you, or something useless like that, you gripped my form in your terrible swift hand and said, she is everything. You gave me a shake, everything to me. And then you fell back into the well, deep in the well of everything. And I stand at the edge and call, chair, book, daughter, and finally, please welcome back to the stage Elena Padua. Acquainted with the Night by Robert Frost. 
I have been one acquainted with the night. I have walked out in rain and back in rain. I have outwalked the furthest city light. I have looked down the saddest city lane. I have passed by the watchman on his beat and dropped my eyes unwilling to explain. I have stood still and stopped at the sound of feet when far away an interrupted cry came over houses from another street. But not to call me back or say goodbye. And further still, at an unearthly height, one luminary clock against the sky proclaimed the time was neither wrong nor right. I have been one acquainted with the night. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Now, I would like to invite you all onto the stage. Everyone, please give a round of applause for all of our participants. so proud of all of you and sincerely inspired. Um, we are going to have some certificates presented momentarily and I'll read each of their names and the certificates will be given to each of them and then after they're given a certificate then I'm going to announce the winner of the competition. Now. Tonight's winner receives $200 and an all-expense-paid trip with an adult chaperone to Washington, D.C. to compete for the national championship. The state winner's school also receives a $500 stipend for the purchase of poetry books. The first runner-up in each state receives $100 with $200 for their school library. A total of $50,000 in awards and school stipends is awarded annually at the national finals. Now, if you could please welcome once again, Ben Brown to the stage. If you can maybe go, oh, oh, and I think you give these. <laughs> ben Brown is going to, I'll, I'll read their names and you can give them the certificate. Very good, thank you, Allison. You're welcome, Ben. <laughs> First up, of course, from Thunder Mountain High School in Juneau, Morgan Blackgoats. And of course, he's on order. <laughs> 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 Maybe we should have. <laughs> Want to hold that up? Congratulations. Perfect. Thank you, and then Danny Brady from Skagway School. <laughs> Here you go. Danny, congratulations. Thank you, ben. <laughs> Iris Downey from Homer High School. Here you go. Congratulations. <laughs> Kiara Haste from Unalaska City School. Thank you, Kiara. Jane Emingen from Hogarth Kinginka. Senior Memorial School in Savunga. Mariah Jacobson, Glen Allen School. Thank you, Mariah. <laughs> Elisa Larson from Petersburg High School. Honor Mealy from North Pole High School. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> from Barrow High School, Claire Mueller. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. From Reddington Junior Senior High School in Wasilla, Elena Padua. And from West Anchorage High School, Jania Toomey. Thank you, Jania. And now to announce the winners. Our first runner-up in second place 
Janya Toomey. <laughs> <laughs> Second place, one more photo. Oh, yay, another round of applause. Well done. <laughs> and our first place 2018 Alaska State Poetry Out Loud competition winner is Elisa Larson. Congratulations, Elisa. Well done. <laughs> Congratulations, and how about another big round of applause for everyone. Thank you all so much. Thank you to all the parents and families of our State Poetry Out Loud finalists and all the Alaska Poetry Out Loud coordinators for 2018. Thanks also to our judging staff, Patricia George, Ron Guile, DJ Durego, No Attack Post, Mandy Malott, and the board and staff of the Juno Arts and Humanities Council. Thanks to Mary Irvine and Anastasia Tarman of the Alaska State Library's Archives and Museum. Thanks to The Prospector. Thanks to K2 and the 360 Studio. And thank you to our State Poetry Out Loud coordinator, Amanda Falori. And thank you so much for letting me be a part of this, and we'll see you next year. <laughs>The Alaska State Poetry Out Loud competition is made possible by the Alaska State Council on the Arts in partnership with the Juno Arts and Humanities Council, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the Poetry Foundation.